Hey there guys, welcome back to the Modern JavaScript Crash Course to Lesson 20. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at one of the most important features of JavaScript, and that's JavaScript functions. As always guys, if you like the content, please show your support by hitting that like button. And if you're new here and like to learn about web development and design, make sure to hit that subscribe button and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. So first, let's take a look at the definition of a function. A function is a block of code that encapsulates one isolated self-contained behavior for the computer to perform. Now in layman's terms, this essentially means that a function is just a block of code that performs a specific task to achieve a desired outcome. Now the importance and functionality of a function lies in the fact that they create reusable code. So instead of copying and pasting and repeating the same code throughout different parts of your program, you can write that code inside one function and then use it over and over again whenever you need to or want to. Now another thing to note is that in JavaScript, functions are in the category of objects when it comes to data types and what you would call them are first class objects because they can have properties and methods just like any other object. So we can call function function objects. Now what distinguishes them from other objects is the fact that functions can be called upon or the correct term is invoke them and the code inside that function runs only when it's needed, meaning only when it's called or invoked. So let's head into VS Code now and look at the two most common ways to create functions. So as you can see here with these two comments, we've got the function declaration and we've also got the function expression. So first let's take a look at creating a function declaration. So we'll just go underneath this comment here. So to declare a function this way, first we're gonna need the function keyword. Then after the function keyword, we insert the name of our function which we're going to call my function. So super original. Then after the function, we're going to include some parentheses. Now we can actually list some parameters between these parentheses, but we'll keep this empty for the moment as we will take a look at parameters and arguments a bit later on. But for now, let's just keep this simple. So after the parentheses, we use curly braces and these curly braces are essentially the function's body. And then finally the code that we want to run inside of our function. So we'll just keep this really simple and we'll just create a console log uh, with a string data type of hello world again super original so that's how we can create a function declaration first you have the function keyword followed by the function name which in this case is my function and we'll just close this gap here with the parentheses inside the parentheses we can actually log in parameters which again we'll look at in just a moment after the parentheses we have the curly braces which is the body of the function and then inside of the body of the function is the code we want to run when we call upon this function now, if you take a look at the console, you can see nothing actually happens at the moment. This hasn't been logged into the console. Again, that's because what distinguishes function objects from other objects is that we have to invoke them. And the way we do that is using the function name, which in this case is my function. So we'll go underneath this function here, type out my function. Then we use the parentheses again, really important that we do that. And as you can see now, if you take a look at the console, it prints out hello world, which is inside the body of our function. And again, the importance and the functionality of the function lies in the fact that this code now inside of our function body is reusable code. So instead of copying and pasting and repeating the same code throughout different parts of our program, all we need to do is write out our function here, insert the code that we wanna use inside of the function like we've done here, and then use it over and over again and whenever you want to by simply invoking it. And just to show you guys, if I duplicate this a couple more times, you can see it prints out this block of code inside of our function two more times instead of having to write this whole function out again. So that's how we can declare a function. Now, another way we can create a function are creating them through function expressions. So we'll go underneath this comment and the way function expression works are that they're stored in a variable. So we'll create a constant here and we'll just call this uh, const animal. And the way we make this a function is we just use the function keyword. We don't include a name in here. We just include parentheses and then we include the curly braces which which we're going to insert our block of code in and then inside here we're just going to keep it simple and console log uh, the name of my dog which is dingus and that is how we can write a function expression so whenever we set a value to a variable which in this case is a function this is called an expression and because we're looking at functions here this is now a function expression and what we also need to do here is in fact close this off with semicolons, which is important to include for function expressions. We don't need them for declarations, but we do need them for function expressions. So just keep that in mind. And as you can see here now, we've created our function expression. So how do we invoke this function expression? Well, exactly the same way we do with the function declaration. We simply call upon the name of the expression, which in this case is animal. 
include the parentheses and as you can see in the console now dingus gets logged into the console and i'm just going to comment these out just so it's a bit clearer and again this is now reusable code which we can use over and over again whenever we want by simply invoking it the way we've done just now and again just to demonstrate we're just going to duplicate it a couple more times and as you can see it prints out dingus two more times so these are the two most common ways to create functions in javascript the function declaration and the function expression now the next thing to talk about is what the difference is between the two and the major difference between the two is hoisting now there's a lot more to javascript hoisting but just to give you guys a simple explanation it's basically just a javascript behavior which moves all of the declarations to the top of your code before it gets executed so function declarations here are hoisted to the top of the file before the code is even executed but function expressions don't actually get hoisted to the top of the file this is why we can actually invoke a function before defining it with a function declaration so just to show you guys exactly what i mean i'm just going to um, uncomment this but i'm going to paste it above the function declaration you see here the code actually still gets invoked despite us declaring a function after we've invoked it now let's try the same thing with a function expression so we're just going to grab the animal here and put it above the expression you can see it's given us a reference error so it's saying cannot access animal before initializing it so this is actually one of the key differences between the two function declarations again get hoisted to the top of the file automatically whereas function expressions do not so this kind of gives you the indication of which one you should technically use and again this is a matter of preference you don't have to follow it this way but personally i prefer to use function expressions because this forces me to define all of my functions at the top of my files and this in turn makes me write cleaner and more readable code now another thing about functions and variables is the concept of scope which again is a whole topic on its own but just going to briefly go over it now so in javascript there's things called global and local scope variables created in a file not enclosed by anything are globally scoped variables and they can be accessed from anywhere even inside of a function so just to demonstrate that for you guys i'm going to get rid of all of this and i'm just going to create a variable uh, again let's just call it uh, animal and set it to a value of dingus which is my dog this variable now is not enclosed by anything it's just a variable that's globally scoped and it can be accessed from anywhere so we can access it from the console log here so i'm just typing in animal see it appears inside of our console here now we can also access this variable inside of a function so I'm just going to create a function declaration so we're going to say function my function parentheses curly braces and then we'll just log in here animal and just to show you guys it's working I'm going to comment that out and then all we need to do is just invoke this so we're going to say my function Include the parentheses and as you can see it's shown up in the console here because we're able to access this variable inside of our function here because this variable now is globally scoped now let's try the same thing but put the variable inside of our function here so i'm just going to get rid of this console and i'm going to put the variable inside of the function or the body of the function you can see here it's working and it's showing up in the console but let's just try and log in animal just through the console globally so we'll try and log in animal you can see it's throwing us a reference error and saying animal is not defined however you can see it's still appearing inside of the function that's because our variable right now is locally scoped inside of this function and it's only accessible inside of our function and trying to trigger it outside of the function as you can see it will give us an error again because it's only accessible inside of the function local scope ie the curly braces here or the function body so that's just another thing to know about functions and variables and that is the concept of scope you've got globally scoped variables and locally scoped variables which are local to the body of the function and only the body of the function so now we have a better understanding of what functions are in javascript how they operate learn a little bit about scope and how variables work inside of functions let's now move on to parameters and arguments so i'm just going to get rid of this function here and we'll just create a new function and we'll say a uh, function keyword and we'll call this function racing car inside the parentheses and then the curly braces so what we can actually do now with this function is actually make it dynamic by inserting parameters and arguments and we'll first take a look at parameters and where we insert the parameters are inside the parentheses here and then what we could do is use the parameters inside of our block of code or inside the body of the function which is inside the curly braces so let's go ahead and create one parameter now we'll just say car 
and now we can use this parameter inside our block of code so what I'm going to do is just console log let's say my favorite car is and then we insert that parameter and we insert it the same way we would insert a variable inside of our back ticks so the pound sign and the curly braces and then we just insert the parameter here which is car now again because this is a function we need to invoke this otherwise nothing will appear in the console here so we invoke it by calling upon our function which is racing car insert the parentheses which is really important and if you take a look at the console now, it's saying my favorite car is undefined. And the reason it's returning us undefined at the moment is, is because the car parameter here hasn't been assigned a value. Now, the way we give it a value is by giving it an argument inside of where we invoke it, inside of these parentheses. So uh, my favorite car is going to be, uh, let's say, let's say, uh, uh, say McLaren. And if you now take a look at the console, you can see now it's given us the output of my favorite car is McLaren instead of undefined because what's happening here is that our parameter now of car is essentially acting as a container for our argument which is the value of McLaren so this argument now is linked to the parameter and is therefore giving us the design output that we want which is saying my favorite car is McLaren so that's how we can include parameters and arguments inside of our functions now we can actually add more parameters here so we can use multiple parameters and we do that by comma separating all of our parameters so we say car and we're also going to say make another one for driver and we're going to say uh, my favorite car is car which in this case is mclaren and my favorite driver is and then we'll insert that new parameter we'll say driver and then again it's given us undefined because we haven't given this parameter an argument yet or a value and we do that after the mclaren here so we're going to say uh, we'll insert a string and we'll say hamilton so as you can see in the console now we've inserted two parameters and we've given it two arguments so we're saying my favorite car is mclaren and my favorite driver is hamilton and that's how we can include parameters and arguments inside of our function making them more dynamic so to summarize this lesson guys on functions, the two common ways to create functions in JavaScript are through the function declaration and the function expression. Function declarations are created using the function keyword followed by the name of that function and parentheses along with curly braces which act as the body of the function and then we invoke the function by writing out the function name followed by the curly braces as you can see in this example. We've also got the function expression. This function is stored in a variable and is invoked in the same way as a function declaration. The key difference between the two is hoisting, where function declarations are automatically hoisted to the top of the file, whereas function expressions are not. Variables created inside a function can't be accessed outside of that function because they're locally scoped inside the body of the function. And we can also make our functions dynamic by including parameters and arguments, as we've just seen in this example here. So that's going to conclude the video guys if you enjoyed the content please show your support by hitting that like button and if you guys are new here and like the content please consider subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next video